Okay. Um, so let's continue from where we had left off last time. Um, so this is the entire idea behind the iterative decoding of product codes. Um, and this is applicable no matter what the size of these square product code is or even the rectangular pod, rectangular parity check code. You can do this iterative method. And by the way, this holds uh, for whether the channel is BC or even BSC. Um, even for the BSC, you would just go um, row by row and column by column in exactly the same manner which is shown here. And wherever the parity is not satisfied, you would flip the corresponding bit. Um, for the BSC, maybe you may do little better by uh, flipping only those bits which for, for which uh, when you flip the bit, suddenly more than one parity gets uh, corrected. So for example, if uh, a particular bit is flipped, if the row and the column parity both get satisfied, th then you would flip that corresponding bit. But otherwise, in fact, you can still use the same uh, approach, uh, even the simpler approach which is shown here. Uh, those of you who are proactive uh, would take this particular diagram on this particular slide, slide number 52, and you would implement this in MATLAB. It shouldn't take you too much time to, to implement this particular uh, encoding and decoding algorithm. You just give exactly the same eraser pattern which is shown here and see whether your iterative decoding can go through the same sequence of steps and recover uh, the transmitted message in the manner that is shown here. Um, obviously, uh, this is not part of the project or anything, so it is up to you if you want to do it or not. But I mean, unlike your 11th and 12th grade physics or chemistry or uh, uh, mathematics, uh, there will not be any examples from NCRT book or any of the other uh, books that you may have made use of. But here it is more like you will have to do this work on your own, develop the programs on your own, which is probably not something that you would have done uh, until your high school. So this is a great programming exercise. It will allow you to flex your programming muscles and also it will give you a good handle on what this iterative method is. Now to move on, we are going to consider the exact same iterative decoding, but in a little more formalized manner. Uh, in a manner which allows this iterative scheme to work on codes which are not even this product codes or the rectangular parity check codes. Um, the underlying idea remains exactly the same, but we are going to treat it a little more mathematically and that is going to allow us some flexibility and some additional power that we simply don't have otherwise. And so towards that, we are going to take a look at the parity check matrix for this 9-4 product code. And that, uh, as you may have studied from the last uh, set of uh, lecture notes, it looks like this. The parity, ch parity, check, parity check matrix is given by H, where H has, in this case, it has five rows and nine columns. Why does it have five rows? Uh, you can see that H has five rows. The reason it has five rows is because there are five parity check equations in the product code. Two here, two here, and then this additional parity check is the parity on parity. All of these five parity check equations have to be satisfied by all of these nine transmitted bits uh, of the code. And when I say they have to be satisfied, what I mean is that the product of each of the row of H matrix with the code word has to be zero, modulo two. What are the entries of this H matrix? The first row corresponds to the first parity check. As you see, the first parity check is taking these two message bits and introducing this parity bit, which is code word number bit number three. And so that's why there are three ones and the rest of them rest of the entries in the first row, first row are zero. Uh, similarly, the second row is the second row of this square table has C4, C5 and C6. And that's, that's why C4, C5 and C6 have one here. 
the third row has c1 c4 and c7 this three bits become the part of spc and so that's why i have one here in c1 c4 and c7 so that is how we have constructed this parity check matrix now we are going to represent this matrix itself as a graph and uh, the top of the graph is called the check nodes we have also called them supervisory nodes and the bottom of the graph is nothing but our uh, transmitted code word bits in this case c1 to c9 and they are also known as either bit nodes or variable nodes and this type of graph is called the tanner graph uh, by the name of the uh, scientist who came up with this particular scheme uh, his name is Michael Tanner. You can search for Tanner graph codes online and you will find the original paper that was written by Tanner in 1980s. And uh, it is also called uh, in the graph theory, the, ma the mathematical branch of graph theory, this type of graphs are called bipartite graphs. And the reason they are called bipartite graphs is because all the nodes of this graph 9 plus 5, 14 nodes, 14 nodes, they form two clear groups. In this case, the check nodes and the variable nodes. And none of the nodes in one group are connected to uh, the nodes in the same group. You see that S1, S2, S3, S4, S5 have no interconnections between them. In the same way, all the variable nodes are also not connected to each other. This is the graphical representation of the parity check matrix of the uh, 9.4 product code. But it shouldn't be uh, completely a new representation for you because we have already uh, done this in the context of single parity check code and also for the Hemming code. So let's just take a brief look at it. Um, if you recall when, when we studied the Hemming code, we we had uh, oh sorry for for the single parity check code we had the same type of graphical representation which is shown here but in this case there is only one check node because it is just single parity check code and these are the variable nodes um, let us see uh, did we do the Hemming code uh, yeah, uh, the tenor graph for the Hemming code is over here. These are the three check nodes corresponding to three parity check equations of the Hemming code. And these are the variable nodes. And this is the bipartite graph of the Hemming code. So in fact, any, any uh, linear block code once you know it's a parity check matrix here uh, can be converted into a graphical uh, code a bipartite graph code as it is shown here so this example is only for the 9 for product code but the same type of tenor graph can be uh, drone for any uh, linear block code given uh, the edge matrix, the parity check matrix. Now we are going to take that iterative algorithm that we studied in the prior uh, set of slides and apply it to this graphical representation of the product code. And so towards that, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to take the bits that are coming out of the channel, it can be BEC, it can be BSC, uh, or it can be even the Gaussian noise channel. Uh, the method is generally applicable. We are going to load the variable nodes with the output of the channel. And then we are going to send messages back and forth. The first VNs will send the message to CN. And then after that CNs will send the message to VN. And then we are going to iterate over 
these two steps. Uh, and therefore, this algorithm is called message passing algorithm. Uh, and there is a whole uh, class of methods that fall under this general terminology called message passing. Uh, it's a very powerful approach. It's almost uh, getting into the advanced estimation technique. But we, we get a pretty good idea of this advanced message passing method by taking this example of uh, the product code that we had just looked at. So how does the message, message passing works, work? In the first step of message passing, all the VNs send message to the CN. Now remember, CN is the supervisor node. So each VN sends a message to its supervisory node. And what the VN does is, in case of binary erasure channel, uh, oh, by the way, I think I forgot to define what, uh, uh, there is some terminology called DC and DV. Um, so DC is the degree of check node and DV is called the degree of variable node. And the degree is nothing but, degree of a node is nothing but the number of edges that are connected to a particular node. So degree of this check node is 3 because there are 3 edges that are connected to this check node. In fact, each of these check nodes has the same degree of 3. So DC, degree of check nodes for the product code is 3. DV is the degree of variable node. For example, DV for the first variable node is 2. Second variable node, it is also 2. Third variable node, DV is again 2. Fourth variable node has a DV value of 3. So that is the terminology for DC and DV. Uh, the way VNs will send the message to CN is if DV minus 1 message is from the CNs other than the one that the VN is sending the message to, if they all are eraser, then only the VN will send eraser to the CN. Otherwise, the VN will just send, even if there is one non erase message from any of the CNs or from the channel, then the VN will send that value. Uh, this holds for all the iterations except the very first one, uh, where the VN simply sends the value that it has received. If it, if it receives a non erase value, it sends that. If it receives erased value, it sends that to the CN. Now we come to the CN to VN message passing. Here, if any of the DC minus one messages that a particular CN receives from all the VNs that are connected to it, if all of them are not erased, which is this part, when none of the DV minus one messages are unerased, this particular CN will send to this VN the modulo to sum of those unerased messages. However, if even one of the DC minus one message is erased, then the CN cannot do anything. It will just send an eraser. And one note is that a particular node never uh, sends back a message which, which depends on the message that came from that node itself. Because to do so would mean that we are doing positive feedback which is not a desired thing. If you think of this message passing as as if let's say you are exchanging rumors that, that, that is actually what is going on. Each node is kind of exchanging rumor about what the value of that particular node is as it hears from the other nodes that are connected to it. Now when you exchange rumors Suppose you want to pass the rumor to, to your friend. It is better that you don't tell that friend something that actually came from him in the first place. Because then what is the use? You actually hear rumors coming from the other friends. And from that you make your own judgment and give, give that to, to, to the friend that you are sending that particular rumor message. So, so that is this entire uh, idea about uh, not creating a positive feedback. Uh, this 
may seem little condensed to you right now but when we take an example you will see that it is fairly straightforward actually it is the same thing that we did earlier in context of row and column decoding but we are doing that now in the context of the standard graph so this is the standard graph of uh, our 94 product code and i have already loaded the variable nodes with the received bits remember there were five bits which were erased exactly those five bits are erased here also but now that row by row and column decoding that we had done earlier we are going to do that same thing but we are going to think about it as if there are messages getting exchanged between vns and cns so let us consider for example in the very first case let us consider this particular cn uh, in the very first step, first step, all the VNs will send their values to this CN. So this CN will get E, 1 and 0. Now, this CN has to worry about only this E coming from this VN. And so this CN will send a message back to this VN, which is a modulo 2 sum of 1 and 0. That is what is shown here. Uh, sorry, I think... I am considering the second VCN actually. This CN we will consider uh, pretty soon. But here the same thing. Uh, this CN gets 1 and 0. And then using that, it sends a message back to the VN number 5. The green lines are the messages going from VN to CN. And the blue line is the message going from CN back to the VN. The same thing is done by CN number 3 that we just said, uh, or we discussed. And now a similar situation can uh, occurs also at CN number 5. And that is the end of iteration number 1. All the VNs have sent their messages to CN, and CNs have sent back uh, their uh, messages back to the VNs and now you can see that actually three out of five erasers have been corrected. Now we again um, uh, do the same iteration where again all the VNs will send their messages uh, back to the CNs and then now CNs are able to correct the remaining two erasers also. So this is uh, the same exact iterative algorithm except that it has been implemented on the tenor graph. Uh, so let us stop here and uh, we will uh, take up the remaining part uh, in the last uh, set of slides.